Hey, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Women's Maximum Fitness Podcast. I'm super excited to have IFBB Pro Mela Ash with me today. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful, Deborah. How are you doing today? And thank you so much for having me on the show. Thank you for being here. I'm, I'm doing great. So, you know, it's funny, we were just talking about how some of the people get dolled up for the interviews and some of them look like they just came from the gym and it's totally a choice, but it's funny because I, I was thinking about how women's bodybuilding, it didn't really used to have all the glam. And I just love that, that, cause I remember even when I, you know, probably about 10 years ago when I started getting into the sport and somebody was telling me, you know, then women's physique came out and they kind of equated it with bodybuilding and were saying like, you know, they don't do all the hair and the makeup and the jewelry, like, you know, like figure would do or whatever. Mm -hmm. And maybe it wasn't as much, but now I think it's just as much. And I love the extra feminine aspect that, um, you know, all that, all the accessories add to the package on stage. Mm -hmm. Precisely. I'm like, and that, that what you're saying is actually true. That is one of the things, um, because I actually got into the sport it's been a little under nine years now. And when I first got into the sport and really started um, paying attention, like um, when I first got into it, you know, what I noticed when it came to women's bodybuilding and everything else, the glam only happened at the Olympia level. You know, yeah. anything below that, yeah. you know, it was just like, and I almost felt like the mindset was, well, this is women's bodybuilding and it's just the same as men's bodybuilding. So the only thing that matters is the muscle, you know, but no matter what, even though I feel that our division is equal right. to uh, men's bodybuilding, you know, if open bodybuilding is the king of the sport, then women's bodybuilding is the queen. But my mindset is that there's, there's a different air to women's bodybuilding. You know, and it is, it, it's all about the total package. You know, it is about the hair, the makeup, the way that you present yourself on stage, which packages and accents are muscle. And it should be the same for every division. I don't think that the more muscle, the less, um, as I like to call it, extra. <laughs> you should be, you know, and it's just like, we should take the, um, we should take the exact same time and patience and be meticulous with our, our look and our presentation as we do with everything else. So yeah, I'm like, it's, it's nice that people are appreciating it. Yeah. So it's really, it's really nice. Well, and I was just, I was looking at your Instagram just before we started and your photos are just stunning. Like you're like, I'm just blown away, but your waist is so tiny and you know, the outfits are just perfect. I just, you must love doing your photo shoots. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I'm like it's it's almost like pulling teeth because it's it's. <laughs> well, here's the thing: it's just like I enjoy the fun of the uh, because it, it it for me it's all about giving a. Ever since I crossed over to women's bodybuilding, I'm um, actually even it started with women's physique to be honest with you, but it was one of those things that people always so many people that followed the sport and so many people who are not aware of the sport made the impression, got the impression that because of the muscle that made us less feminine or less attractive. And so I always had this mindset, it's just like I, I, my muscles, in my opinion, is what makes me beautiful. It, it makes me feel sexy. And yeah. so I always want, I always try to project that in my photo shoots. And I'm always selective about my photo shoot, um, the photographers I use, because you do have some They'll see my muscles and all they want will flex and do a most muscular. And I'm just like, the most muscular is, I'm always like, hmm, see, that really doesn't accent my body that well. Can I do this pose instead? <laughs> I think this captures the masculinity and the femininity that I have. <laughs> so they're just like, you're so much of work. And I'm just like, I'm supposed to be, I'm the subject matter. <laughs> But no, I'm like, I do, I do get into, I get into the creativity, trying to think of something different. And last year, I, when I crossed over to women's bodybuilding, I was just like, you know what, I'm going to really stretch myself and try something really different. And the, the, um, the, the actual pictures came out. I couldn't be more happier. I'm just like, they were, they're so, they're so 
out the box different to me, you know, so I love it. So I appreciate that you, you recognize that, that little extra. <laughs> you I just wondered it made me think about you know the couple of times I had photo shoots after I competed I remember seeing the pictures and thinking oh I can't believe that was me do you get that when you look at the pictures oh god I'm like you do the shoot and the thing I tell people I was like you can tell how great a photographer is when you see the raw pictures yeah. you know all the all the pictures are always slightly edited you know you got to get the shadows and everything but I say when you see the raw pictures, you're like, oh my God, is that me? That, and it is, I'm like, when we, I did this recent photo shoot and he was like, come here for a second. And he turned the camera around. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, wait, I was like, oh my God, I look fabulous so bad. <laughs> oh, that's so great. That's so, yeah. Like I, like I had one back shot that was like, you know, it was arms behind, you know, and I'm uh -huh. arched and I was just like, Oh, I didn't know that was back there. Like, <laughs> it's just like, it's so great. It's so great. So oh, I think we all are like, he's like, well, I am, I really look good. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm always like, where were you when I was on stage? Okay. <laughs> right? So great. Well, definitely something that you would, I'm sure, recommend. I mean, even as it is the kind of outside your comfort zone, mm -hmm. you're going to be so happy with the pictures afterwards. Yes. yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. So this is one of the reasons that I wanted to have you on. I think it's really exciting how you have transitioned from, now, I don't even know if you began with bikini, but we're going to get into that. <laughs> She's like, first of all. <laughs> No. <laughs> so you started with figure, but um, for those of you who are watching and listening who don't know, now the IFBB and the MPC have six categories for women competing in bodybuilding. And you have done, yeah, because we have bikini, wellness, figure, Video. fitness, women's physique, yeah. oh, seven, and bodybuilding. Right. Yeah. And you've done three of them. And actually, I honestly just feel like are the poster child for bodybuilding because that's what it is. It's like you you keep building and you grow and you will mature into the next category, the next level of muscle, right? So yes. yeah, so well, let's get started with how I usually start as I ask, um, what is your background as far as athletics and sports what did you mm -hmm. start out with as um as a child and in your teenage years and then how did that transition into getting into competing okay well um i'm i am a very hyper active i was a hyperactive child so i was in tons of any kind of activity that pretty much my mom was like she was like anything that burns off that extra energy by the time you get home i will make sure you get to <laughs> you know she's like i need to get um, when I was um, young, I was in I was in dance, I was in gymnastics, I was actually in volleyball, um, softball, and so over time, you know, you find you find your rhythm, you find what your you you your love or what you're good at. You know, I'm fortunate enough because I know that there's some children out there that they might be good at something, but they don't love it. And I was fortunate enough that my mom was just like, you know, whatever you love. Yeah. That's what you should pursue because that's where you're going to find your joy. And so over time, even though I was good at all these other things, um, I, I, I kind of fell into um, track and field. And so, and that was just something that it just really spoke to me. Um, and it's because it's um, like everything else is more of a, um, a team related sports, well, except gymnastics, but you know, um, it, it held to me, track and field held me accountable. You know, it had nothing to do with, you know, it's all about me. It was just like, win or lose, I'm held accountable for my actions, you know? And so I took, I took that to heart and everything. So that was something I fell in love with. And I took that, everything else kind of fell away. And I took that all the way through college, a little bit after college until I, um, I had a couple of accidents. Um, I broke a femur. Um, after that repelled, I actually got back in, you know, and I got back at the elite level, but then I had, um, I blew my ACL twice and it was to the point that 
I had so much um, cartilage damage around the knee that, you know, my sports um, orthopedic surgeon was just like, um, you're going to need to give this up co competing competitively, or you're going to have to have a knee replacement before you hit 30, you know? And so it was just like, and so it hurt my soul, but, you know, I still kept athletic, being athletic. And then I kind of fell into bodybuilding. It was one of those things that I was accident prone. Well, I'm still accident prone. Like I actually got into women's bodybuilding because I, I roundhouse kicked. Um, I was doing um, kickboxing, did roundhouse kick and broke my toe. So that's that's a whole nother segment. We, we'll just move past that. We're gonna, we're gonna stick a pin in that and put that over here. We're gonna put it over here. <laughs> so anyway, I made a deal with myself that if my orthopedic surgeon could help me heal my foot, that I didn't have to fuse the bones and have to give up being active, that I started ticking off my bucket list. And one of the things that was on my bucket list was when I was in track and field, um, I told me and the, um, the, the other women on the team, we were like, you know, we're going to do one of those fitness competitions, you know, after we finish with this. And that's something I never got around to. So I was like, I'm going to go ahead and do one of those. And so I, I went to a show, it was the Dallas Europa in 2012, and I was like, I can do this, <laughs> you know? So put together a plan and everything, did my first show in November of 2012, fell in love with it. Yeah. And I started competing ever since then. But well, the thing is that I initially wanted to start with women's um, physique. Yeah, because that was the year it came out. Right. Mm -hmm. But the thing was that, to be honest with you, between between just you and me and everybody else who's listening, don't tell anybody. I was actually looking at another federation. Um, the federation is not important because I didn't realize how, you know, how many different federations there were. You know, in track and field, there was just <laughs> one league. You know that you you're different club, but one league. So I didn't go to the other federation because it didn't look right to do women's physique posing in heels. I couldn't understand that. You know, it was like. It just looked kind of weird to me. So yeah. anyway, I came into um, the I, the MPC. But the thing was is that I was under the impression that I can wear um, little ballet shoes. You know, the little ballet slippers. Yeah, I had a thing about being barefoot on stage. So because of that, I was like, I, I can't do that division. <laughs> so I, wound up, I started in figure. Even though when I started, they told me, they were like, you have a lot of muscle density for yeah. figure. They were like, you were, you're borderline. You know, you're borderline right now. And so that's how it actually started is that, you know, I started and I fell in love with it, with the, just the flow and the grace. But, you know, I wind up um, evolving because of the muscle density that I had from being in track and field. And so, and that's one of the good things about bodybuilding is that women who are in other sports like track and soccer and swimming and everything that builds up that kind of, that, that, that baseline muscle development it's a great jumping board yeah. to come into the sport because you know a lot of people are just like oh my god you know how did you develop your legs what kind of workouts did you do and I was just like these are track legs <laughs> you know I was like that's yeah. why they're completely fully developed you know hams and quads I said in glutes I said these are track legs which is a great foundation because for women in my opinion that is one of the hardest things to build so that's actually how I got started with all of that, the dancing and um, the gymnastics helped with my grace and flow on stage. And so that's the thing, but it is what you said. I'm just like, you know, people are always like, oh my God, you, you had to leave figure and move to women's physique. Are you upset? And I was just like, no, because I love, I love weight training. Yeah. I love pushing myself. I love the development and the evolution of my body. And just like you said, in my opinion, that's what the sport is about. And that's what the divisions are for, yeah. to give you some place to go if training and bodybuilding is truly your passion. Yeah. Now, I have nothing against women who find a, 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 a division that they love, mm -hmm. you know, and they manipulate their training year in and year out so they can stay within that vision. Yeah. You know, but for me, it was always just, I always want to see where I can take my body. It's like artwork. I always want to build another beautiful masterpiece. And if that means that I have to transition to another division, then I'm fine with that. And when they tell me that, they're like, Mela, <laughs> it's time for you to lead the division. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, can I do it next week? Or do I have to, you know, fill out some additional paperwork? And I just, I keep moving. And I have to tell everybody, they just say, are you upset? Were you angry? And I'm just like, no, because that's, this is what the sport is about. This is what you're supposed to do. If yeah. the training is what you love. 
you yeah. know, and it is, it's what I love. Yeah. It, it is interesting because like, I remember too, when Juliana Malacarne, she came down from bodybuilding mm -hmm. to, you know, and I, I remember thinking that when, like, I saw her at the New York pro and I think it was 2012 or 2013. And they were saying that she had to come down in size and she did a lot of high volume, high rep um, workouts to lose muscle. And I, I thought she looks awesome. And I, she's been my favorite women's physique, um, you know, yes. Olympian, oh. of course, but um, yeah, it's what it, it's, it's kind of backwards what it took in order to get there. Cause it was the loss of the loss of muscle. Like, uh, like Brooke Walker said on the last episode, um, going from bikini to women's physique, she said, I just, I just wanted to grow more muscle. I wasn't, you know, I wanted to stay in a certain division, but she said, and she said, I thought I was supposed to, but that's the evolution. If you want to keep growing, you're going to outgrow, you know, a category or be working on really fine tuning stuff. You're right. Growing. Yeah. But you are right about Juliana. I'm just like, because, you know, when I came into the sport, she was already in women's physique. But when I used to look back at pictures of her and figure, I was just like, you know, at first I didn't understand. I'm like, how does she keep not placing well? Why is she always getting the last call out? But then the more I understood the sport and I was like, oh yeah, she's not supposed to be here. <laughs> But, I, but it, I was the same way as like when I was in figure and just like Brooke said, you get it almost caught in your mind that you stay focused on that division. And so you're trying your best, trying to fine tune it for the division that you're in that you're working on. I spent like 2015, yeah. which was my last, was my last um, um, year. Um, actually 2016 was my last year. I spent the, almost the entire season working out with bands you know, trying to get conditioned and working out with bands. And it got to the point, you know, I was three weeks before doing a San Antonio Pro and I was just like, what am I doing? Yeah. Wh why, why am I bothering with this? I was like, I just need to, but it was the same way with Juliana. I'm like, when she transitioned, she just fit. And it was, she looked, it was like, this is where you belong. Yeah. And she, I'm like, I always thought she was so, I was so excited when I first got to meet her at the 2017 Olympia. I was, and I really don't fan girl much, but I was just like, I was like, I got to take a picture. And I'm like, cause I was like, you're, you're just body beautiful. She's perfect. And it was, she's just perfect. She was, so perfect. Mm -hmm. she was beautiful. Well, yeah. she still is beautiful, but yes, she yeah. just, she lit the stage on fire when she stepped out there and it was just so beautiful. But yes, I'm like, it is true. I'm like, I think this is a natural transition. Okay. Okay. And I'm just going to put a pin in that because I will prattle on about the stuff that I enjoy and we only have an hour. So go on. You're Let's fine. Just You're <laughs> fine. You know, I was thinking that Lotoria said the same thing that she stuck with bikini for probably another year, just trying like, no, this is where I'm supposed to be. And obviously, I mean, she's not at all supposed to be a bikini. Right. Right. You know, you just think because you think it's just like if I can just fix this one thing, you know, if I could, and I was always like that. If I could just bring my legs down just a little bit and tight, if I could bring them down and tighten them up, right, it, it'll be fine here. You right. know, I, they won't notice the rest of my body. If I could just bring, my legs, they won't notice my, you know, they won't notice that I have biceps and figure. They won't notice, that. right, right. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. <laughs> So my questions for you about doing your first show, did you coach yourself? And then what is like, what is the weight transition on stage? Obviously, well, I don't want to say obviously, I don't know how conditioned, how much you nailed the conditioning on your first show or first couple of shows. But I'm curious about how your weight transitioned from, you know, first show to now. Oh um, my God. You coach no, yourself first. Small. first. Did not nail the conditioning on the first show. <laughs> I, but I think what happens, like everybody else, I'm like, when I first did it, I'm like, because I, um, in, when um, I used to run track, I spent a time period being a, um, um, an assistant coach, sprint coach. And so I was good with the strength and conditioning um, kind of aspects of it. So it was like, okay. So did my own coaching for pretty much 
all through my amateur going into um, pro. And um, actually when I got pro, I started working with nutritional coaches. But um, concerning conditioning, you don't realize that you're not on point until you're backstage and you see what on point looks like because, you know, everybody looks great by themselves. You know, when you take that solo picture, you're like, I am fabulous. I'm about to kill this show. Right. <laughs> That's what it was. You know, I, my weight was coming down, you know, everything was coming together. And I was like, I look fabulous. And I got there and I was just like, I still have track legs and those are not bodybuilding legs note to self need to transition the legs <laughs> and so that was always my thing is just trying to get the legs condition I'm like I had the size and the shape that was my saving grace to be honest with you my shape and my symmetry and my conditioning was was good yeah it wasn't great because it wasn't balanced so I could bring in very good conditioning but when a portion of your body is not as conditioned as the other yeah. The illusion makes it look like the body, that portion of the body might not be as developed or conditioned. Yeah. So it could be as conditioned, but if you're holding water or you're holding fat, you know, or you're not posing right, which is another thing that that took a long time for me to, to grasp the posing aspect because trying to get the legs to function the way bodybuilding legs do is different from track and track people, track people will tell you this all the time. Bodybuilders, oh, it's not the same. Be quiet. You don't know. So track and field, the legs operate as one unit. You know, we're not trying to get one of the three quad heads to work separately. You know, yeah. the quad work in one way, the hamstring. So when I got into bodybuilding, it was just like, well, separate your quads. And I was like, separate what now? What make them do what? <laughs> it was like, flex your leg. They are flex. It was like, show the separation. I have no idea what that means. You know what it's like? So it takes time to, you know, to reprogram that mind and muscle connection. But yes, the first couple of shows, it was trying to really understand that, which is why I started working with, I started getting really good insight from people. I'm like, I had some wonderful mentors coming through the sport because they could see that I had the potential. <laughs> they were like, you have the potential to be, you know, to go pro, you know, it's just that you need to work on these things. And it was just like, you know, this is stuff that you need to look at. When you're trying to, you know, develop yourself, you know, they were like, they always taught me, don't look at where you're at. Yeah. Look at where you're going to figure out what you need to be. Yeah. And so that was the thing as I was training myself. Um, and I, I still do that now. I hold on to that mantra right now. It's like, I don't look at where I'm at. I'm looking at where I'm going to know where I need to be, because that's what makes you stand out. If all I'm doing is trying to bring myself to the level of those I'm getting on stage with, when I was an MP, NPC, then I'm not gonna pop, I'm not gonna stand out. So I would have always looking at national level competitors, Olympia level competitors to continue trying to fine tune my body. But yes, those first couple of shows, it was, it was horrible. I'm like, but it took me three. It took me three to get my pro card. So <laughs> that's really good. Well, so first I wanted to say, as far as conditioning goes, I think a lot of people, like you said, they think oh I look really good and you don't realize one you you honestly you need to look like death if you're ready <laughs> for the stage because no, when you're up there you it brings the, the life back into you but off stage like when you're you know when your mom's telling you like you look sick or whatever that's when you know you're you know you're ready but right. with women we tend to hold that the body fat in our lower yeah. calves so your upper body could be precise and leaned out, you know, six weeks prior to, you know, and you just got to keep going, which is, which is why it's hard because then you probably lose muscle up top in order to lose your body fat. Um, you know, mm -hmm. but you got to get, you know, the glutes cut out. So, and the quads and, and everything else. So, and that's what I'm like, I tell people, I was like, it's not rocket science, but it's a science. Yeah. It's trying to find that right combination that you're getting the water and fat off, yeah. that your body's balanced, but you're not burning so much that you're cannibalizing muscle in key areas, you know? And so, and then, cause the thing is that that was one of my biggest problems is that, you know, I already had very dominant legs. Yeah. So everybody was just like, you need to do more cardio. You need to run. But when I ran, they got bigger. <laughs> so it was like, well, well, you need to train harder. Well, when I trained harder, 
they yeah. got bigger. And so yeah. it was like trying, it's like, okay, if I need to really tax the muscle, yeah. what is left, you know, <laughs> that I can actually get the conditioning and lose the fat and the water without burning. But it is, I'm like trying to find that right balance of what you need to do. And for women, you're right. I'm just like, you can be six weeks out. And it was always like, oh, are you about to get on stage? No, no. See, that's why I have on baggy pants. Because <laughs> my lower half is like two months to eight months. <laughs> I was like, yeah, if it was just the upper body, I could get on stage tomorrow. <laughs> right. But they want to see all of me. And that that's not going to work. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the tell is when you turn around. Yeah, like I said, with women especially, that's where we, I mean, that's where we hold it. So, I mean, you mm -hmm. got to just keep going. That's the problem. You, It's like, it's just you continue with the dieting and everything else until it's all off because you're going to hold it. Those, the, the fattest body parts are going to be the last to go. Last to go. They're the most stubborn. And I tell people, because when I turned pro, it took me a while to finally accept People, when are you going to get on the show? When are you going to get on your next stage? When are you going to get on the show? When my body says so. Yeah. And it was, I, was like, I just would train and diet and just do the cardio and cry a little, <laughs> you know, and just keep motivating myself. And when, when it finally, you know, when my lower body finally gave up the ghost and let go of the fat and let go of the water, then it was like, okay. Let's see what show was coming up. Right. And you pick a show. You know, it's like, okay, there's a show coming up in five weeks. I just got to hang on. <laughs> just got to hang on to that show shows up. But there's, you know, people, they, they get so caught up in this whole, you know, they get a specific show date in their mind. Mm -hmm. And if your body is not in agreement with you, and yeah. so they, I said, there's so much unnecessary stress. Of, yeah. Oh, it's going to be ready in time. And the body says, the lower body's like, no. No, I'm not because I don't, I'm not feeling this stuff, you know, and that's how my lower body speaks. Right. That's how my lower body speaks to me. I'm really not feeling this show. I'm just, I, I really had other plans in July. So I'm more of an August type of feel, right? So it's just like, okay, well, <laughs> that's I, what you do. I think a lot more people are doing that now, like mm -hmm. you said, especially, I think if we learned anything from 2020, it's that you can't count on a show even showing up in the first place. So yeah. You know, they are, I think, let's start dieting, you know, 16 weeks out from a maybe. And then if you're not there, you know, obviously pick a later date. You don't have to right. step on, show, on stage and, you know, if you're not ready. And that's what I always tell I'm like, there's always another show. Yeah. Said, there's always another show. You know, people are like, oh my God, I have to do it. And I'm always like, why? Right. I'm like, I get it. If, is, your, is your parents coming to that show? I'm like, is that... You know, are you are you going to propose to somebody at that show? You know, is there a significant reason that I'm like, if not, well, it's at hometown. Yeah, there's going to be another show. Yeah, there's, there's always another show. So yeah. just stop stressing. Pick another show. Yeah, and but, I think a lot of people um, are starting off fluffier than what they think they are. Or like you said, I mean, you don't know how your body's going to start leaning out and how much time mm -hmm. you're really going to need. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you had it right the first time, especially the amateurs. They start off much fluffier than they think they are. I love, which is one of the biggest problems from my perspective of the wellness division. There are a lot of women, <laughs> oh, I'm wellness. And I'm thinking to myself, no, you're just really fluffy in that area. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. but, Pull you know. Yeah, down there. Right. Yeah. You know, and I'm just like, and, and when I tell people, I'm just like, see, you don't understand the difference between being street fine and compete fine. Yes, that looks great when you're every day walking around and you got your jeans on or your little mini skirt. But when you put that suit on, that's not going to look that cute on stage. And you turn, because you're right, when you turn around, that's like the kiss of death. I'm like, either, either it's, it's on or it's not and there's nothing you can do. And I tell people, I said, that's the thing about the mandatory poses. They are the, you know, they're, they're the, they're the true speakers yeah. and you can't hide it, but yeah. you know, it's like that with every division, you know, you, you'll, you'll know either you're on or you're not, you know, and the people who really know are the people who are in the sport. So I always tell people get at least one competitive friend. I said, because your family, they don't know, yeah. <laughs> you know, right. Have right. You know, you lose 10 pounds. They're just like, Oh my God, you're going to kill the show. And it's like, 
have they seen a show? Right. <laughs> so, right. Like you need that motivation, but you also need a reality check. So, but, <laughs> but no, it is. Um, you know, the wellness division, it, I mean, it's new here in the U.S. in the last year or so. Mm -hmm. and, um, I think it's funny how it was described, you know, kind of as this step up from bikini. But I don't know. I, I'm curious what you think, because I think that the lower half of these women is almost like women's bodybuilding on a smaller scale like I just feel like this isn't even a figure lower half like you are these girls are thick mm -hmm. <laughs> but but you know what I think it, but I think what it is that um because of that slight well it's more than slight actually in women's wellness but because the, they're more lower body dominant because I've seen a lot of the wellness women and you are right I'm like when you see them on stage by themselves with that whole lower body dominance it yeah. does look extremely, you know, two or three levels up. But yeah. when you're, when you, and I always tell people that, but when you set them next to, you yeah. know, a woman's bodybuilder or even a woman's physique competitor. And yeah. I always tell people, you can't take somebody who's five foot and put them next to somebody who's like five, eight and try to do a comparison. I'm just like, you know, it's the height leg sure. ratio kind of thing. And when you put them next to one another, you'll see the it, there is a slightly more dominant as in it's a little thicker in my opinion I don't think it's I think it's a little more in between the legs figure and women's physique yeah but the upper body is between figure and bikini yeah so it is weird that they say it's a step up but the way that the body is built yeah it, it's kind of just it's, it's, it's almost like fitness right it's almost like fitness you know Fitness is kind of between women's physique and women's fitness. I mean, women's figure and bikini and women's fit figure, depending on the actual competitor. Yeah. You know, I'm just like, so, but this, I'm like, when you see them, it's just like, oh my God, she has horse legs. You know, yeah. and, it's like, and you do, I look at this, like, oh my God, look at her legs. But then I'll see her like, you know, off stage and with somebody, I'm like, oh, she's really not that big. Okay, I take that back. You know, it's just yeah. like, well, a lot of the well, well competitors are, you know, they're four eight to five two. They're so the right, so compact. Right, it's so compact, and so I always have to remind myself of that when you see them on stage, because that's the first thing I ask when I'm like, "Oh my God, how tall is she? <laughs> Does anybody know how tall she is?" <laughs> you know, but I'm like, but you do have some. I'm like, there's um, oh, my. and I can't think of what her name is, and I, if we weren't talking. I probably would remember, but she won Pittsburgh. She's actually, I think she's like five seven or something like that. Five six, five seven. I cannot think of what her name is. Um, yeah. So if you wouldn't mind when you're posting this and everything, if you can figure out the name is and just put her name up underneath, <laughs> just slide it underneath there for me. <laughs> She just won Pittsburgh now, so it wasn't. So Eurasia, um, what's her name? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're right. She won. She won New York. She got second. Okay. And I, what is her name? Oh my God! Is it? Oh yeah, I know. It's, I her, it's an A, right? Is it yeah, like right. I'm like, I'm like, beautiful. I'm just like, she's yeah. tall. You know, well, she's tall for bodybuilding. You know, but she's tall. But hey. the whole thing, just like, anyway. So yeah, I'm just like, she has a nice dominant leg, also, and everything. But you know, like when you see them off stage, it's you know, it looks. It doesn't look as dominant as it does on stage when they hit those poses. So posing does wonders to the body and everything. But yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. I, you I'm know, like, the name is it's I can't and I can't see on my phone right now. So but I, I, that's I, I thing. Sure. Because <laughs> you know, normally you just get on the phone, but I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm actually on my phone, so I can't. <laughs> it's not gonna look weird if I just you know blank out for a second. Come right. back. No. But anyway. But yes, I'm just like, Angela, most times they're not. What? Is it Angela Borges or? Angela. I, I think it, yeah. I, I can't. It starts with an A. I it did just start with an A. Blonde, beautiful. She won Pittsburgh and she got them like, like they, they, they switched spaces. Like she won I, Pittsburgh yeah. and then she got second. Yeah, her and her, yeah. Eurasia. Eurasia. I'm I, horrible for name too. Which is I, don't, 
Yeah, isn't it Angela Borges Wellness? That's her. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So like, I'm like that. I'm like. So I didn't know that she was so tall. I didn't. Know I didn't. That. I didn't realize it either until that um, she did a photo shoot for um, NPC um, online. Okay. Um, and it was her and it was two other competitors. Yeah. And her in relation to everybody else, it was like, oh, she's much taller than I thought she was, you know? So, and when I, I always have to tell people, I always have to quantify this. When I say tall, tall for bodybuilding, you know, so she's probably about five, eight, five, seven. Okay. Well, <laughs> but that's very true because, um, yeah, the taller you are, the more you have to, the more muscle you have to add to keep yourself look muscular because right. you got more so you, need to fill out the, you have more frame to fill out. And so that's what it boils down to. And so, how but tall yeah. are you? How tall are Pardon? you? How tall are oh, you? I'm actually, I'm a little under five, six. So I claim five, six. So we're going to say five, six. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm a little under five, six, but yeah. Okay. But I always tell people, I'm just like, that's just, that's private mailer. Public mailer when I'm in my heels, I'm like five, nine, easy. So. <laughs> So public mail, I'm about five nine, but you know, on stage and private mail, I'm a little under five six. But <laughs> anyway, what was your what was your stage weight then for that like first figure show? Like, what did you my first my first figure show? I came in around 127. Okay. So I came in 127, um, and then you know, I'm like literally, I. I the following, because it was in November, and back then, you know, the season ended in November. You didn't have shows that continued on, and yes. the season didn't start to almost April. So, you know, after that, and you know, I got the feedback that I needed, and even though I had qualified for um, um, Team Universe, which is what it was called back then, I'm like now it's Universe Championships, but you know, they were like, um, I qualified in the Texas State Naturals for Team Universe. So, but they were like, that's the only, you know, national show you need to do a, a different type of show to qualify for the rest of them. So I, I planned on doing the Ronnie's, which was in like April or May at that time, late April. And so when I got on stage then, I was about 132. Okay. So, yes, yeah, so it was like, it was like every season, it was always, I always notched up just a little bit more and more that, yeah, by the time I got to physique, women's physique, um, and I was at my leanest, I was 139 pounds. Okay. So I'm just like, yeah, so every division, you know, it, it, I always just crept up just a little more in the weight, you know, but stuff like that. But, you know, they usually gauge, depending on your height, you know, one of the um, key factors that, um, you know, they tell you that you should um, look into, depending on your height, um, is that when you start hitting that if you're under like five, four and you're hitting that 140 mark, then you're kind of moving into the woman's bodybuilding if you, but if you're lean. And so that's the thing that a lot of people, a lot of competitors, they make the mistake of transit because there's some that, you know, they want to get to the next division so quickly and they're, oh, well, I'm at this weight, but you weren't lean. Yeah. You know, you might've looked great on stage, but you weren't truly show lean. And that's what, you know, to, if you're show lean, you're hitting that you know, 140 or something, and you're under five, four, you, it's time for you to look at transitioning. And so, you know, me being the height that I was, you know, I was like, it wasn't until I hit about 146. I'm like, and so when I got on stage last, last year, wow, I can't believe that it's 20. Yeah. So when I got on stage um, in women's um, figure, I mean, women's physique in 2020, I was about 148. Okay. I was 148. And so, um, yeah, I knew when I was backstage and I looked at everybody else. I wasn't 100%, but in the back of my mind, I was like, this feels like a transition year. <laughs> you know, because you, you don't, even though you're, you might be looking at the scale, you, at some point, you're no longer looking at, thinking of the scale. You're just thinking of the conditioning. And yeah. so, you know, and so that's the whole thing is that at that time period, you know, I was about 148, but, you know, at that time period also, I had been to the Olympia a couple of times. And so my, my size, you know, 
I always considered it from the point, okay, I'm trying to get back to this stage. And on this stage, they're coming in a little denser. Yeah. But then it was also a situation that women's bodybuilding had gone away from the Olympia. And yeah. so I think that was, I, I'm not going to say I think, I know that was part of the reason in hindsight why women's figure competitors, I mean, women's physique competitors were co- were being allowed for lack of terms to yeah. come in a little heavier into shows because there was no place else to go, so yeah. to speak. Because even though there was women's bodybuilding still existed, and that's what I explained to so many people. I was like, the reason I wouldn't consider a few years ago, because I was asked that, would you ever consider transitioning to women's you know, bodybuilding? And I was like, no. I was like, because I don't have it in me to do what needs to be done to try to get to that mass level. Yeah. And so I was like, this whole idea of getting to such a mass level that it is literally rivaling men. I was like, I don't, I don't have that in me. I was like, I was like, I don't, I I like, I like my muscle. I like filling out my frame. I was like, but I love my look. Yes. So that was my whole thing. I was like, number one, I was like, number two, I was just like, the goal is to make it to the Olympia stage. Yeah. So I don't want to transfer into a division where that's no longer possible. You know, I was just like, that's something that I've always been striving for. I want to be Miss Olympia one day, you know? And so I was like, if that's no longer in in, in the goal, I was like, that's not the direction I want to go into. So, and that's when people are like, well, aren't you upset you had the chance? I was like, no, I said, it, it all timed out perfect. Women's bodybuilding came back to the Olympia. I, they started adhering to sizing and they were telling women, it's like, look, we have the, all the divisions we need now. You need to find your place. Yeah. I said, I, knew I didn't belong there anymore. So I didn't have a problem with it, but yes. And when I got on the Olympia stage last year, I was a little over 151 pounds. So, you know, yeah. it was just like slowly, but you know, I know I have to grow on do So I will definitely next time get on stage, I'll be much, I'll be a little heavier than I was then filling out my frame. Cause my goal right now is to fully fill out my frame completely. So do you- I'm excited. Do you know the story behind why they had pulled um, women's bodybuilding from the Olympia? Because um, one thing that I wanted to add with that, with women like you, with Drea Shaw, with Margie, you all are beautiful. You know what I mean? And I think it's super important. This has been a theme that has been reiterated over the last couple of episodes with with Brooke, with Latoria, talking about how you, when you get into this sport, you have to do it for yourself and love your look and find a place where you're going to try to fit in best, but Mm -hmm. not to necessarily change what you love about yourself in order to fit into a category. At the end, you have to walk away with the physique that you've built and the person that you've built and you want to stay true to yourself, you know? So I love that they came back with women's bodybuilding and the women that are representing it are saying, you know, no, we're, this is how we're going to present women's bodybuilding. And it's, it's beautiful. And I'm just so glad that it's there, but I'm just kind of curious. I don't really know was pulling away from there. Um, were they thinking it was becoming too, too much or what? Happened? I think, I think that it was, it was a, it was, um, it was a pushback. There are, there are individuals, um, fans and just lovers of muscle that their mindset is that the bigger, the better, the more, the better. It doesn't make a difference as a man or woman. They, they just want more. But, you know, I, I tell people from my perspective, it's important for me in relation to being an athlete, not just a competitor, but an athlete, that I keep the distinction between what fans of muscle want and love and what the sport is requiring. Yes. And so I think at some place along the lines, you know, through, through history, that it started blending. Yeah. that people were more caught up with the fans who were just like, we want bigger, we want more, add more mass. And it was just like that people, um, that competitors started um, kind of 
sliding away from the general guidelines of, you know, which, you know, I tell people that it's like, oh, they've changed the, you know, the requirements. I was like, no, I said, if you, if you look at the NPC, I said, how they describe it. I said, from every division, I said, it, it hasn't changed. I said, it's just the fact that what the majority was doing yeah. was what was balancing the stage. And so I always tell people, I said, you guys have to remember, somebody has to win. Right. So if you have to do a comparison and if 15 people show up and 10 of them look like this yeah. and only five of them look like this, well, three of them look like this and two of them look like this, the 10 is what's going to show that's what's going to balance the stage is what, you know, the phrase that I've heard judges say, we have to balance the stage. You can't compare a banana to a, a peach. You got to get a bunch of apples. And yeah. so if the majority of them all look like this, then that's what balances the stage. Yeah. And so yeah. that's the whole thing is that people started looking back and they're just like, well, she won. So that's what we must look like. No, she won because at that show, that's what the majority came in looking like. Right. You know, so that's what people lose is that somebody has to win. Yeah. You know, it's just like, just like women's physique. Yeah. If everybody that showed up for a women's physique competition all just stepped out of bikini. Yes, we're going to look like this is a hot mess, but somebody has to win. <laughs> that right. doesn't mean that all of a sudden they told all the women, you know, physique competitors, you got to get rid of all your muscles because this is what they're looking for. Yeah. At this show, this is what had to win. Well. It reminds me of what Brooke had said too. She said, when you, Brooke said, when I decide this is what I want women's physique to look like, um, and I bring it to the stage and I've got, you know, like you said, 10 other people who think also, this is what I want this category to look like. Now we are sending a message that this is what you have to choose from. So if you have, you know, 15 women's bodybuilders who are, I, I don't know how to describe it without saying, you know, something that isn't pleasant, but if you don't look beautiful and represent what you, you yes. really want women's bodybuilding to look like, then you don't, you're not showing the judges that this is what we want the category to look like, but you have to stick to your guns with what you well, want. I that. And, you know, even though a, a lot of people use the word beautiful and to me, I'm like, it is beautiful. I'm like, but from the, from the athletic um, perspective, it's aesthetics, yeah. you know, it's this it's aesthetic um, look that is what is, is important, yeah. especially in women's bodybuilding. It's not like how in men's bodybuilding where um, they're looking at just body parts, you know? So a lot of times you have competitors and you have fans who Oh, you should have won. Do you see the sides of, sides of your, your hamstrings? Do you see your arms? It's just like, it's not a, it's not a arm. It's not a body part show. Yeah. It's the entire package. It's the symmetry and the aesthetics, the muscle belly and conditioning. Yeah. It's the entire package. Yeah. And so for a lot of us, the aesthetics is also the hair, the makeup. It's all of that. And the symmetry. You know, how you're shaping the body, bringing in a very beautiful, muscular yeah. female frame. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of us, that's what it is. And it's not, it's not that we're trying to, because a lot of people, oh, you're trying to make women's bodybuilding into women's physique. No, because if you compare women's physique, yeah. now that all the divisions are where they're supposed to, if you compare a true woman's bodybuilding to a, a true woman's physique competitor, you can see the size and muscle density difference. Yeah. And that's what I tell women who are considering transitioning over. When you transitioned over, yeah, it was time for me to transition over. My muscle bellies look so dense and three-dimensional. Yeah. That's distinction of women's bodybuilding. Yeah. You know, just because you can become lean doesn't mean that you have the muscle bellies to transition. Yeah. And people, a lot of people also make this mistake of thinking that, if you're tall in a woman, you're supposed to be a woman's bodybuilder. And I hear that all the time. Oh no, she's supposed to be a woman's bodybuilder. There's like, well, she's your size. I'm like, she's 5'10". I'm just like, so that's not saying much to her if you're comparing her arm and back to me because my frame is smaller and her height has nothing to do with the vision. Yeah. Bigger is not taller. <laughs> 
bigger is denser, a denser muscle belly, a rounder muscle belly. And so a lot of people, they don't understand the terminology. So they equate it to, you know, this. And I always tell people, this isn't that. Yeah. You know, but that's what it is. I feel like, you know, um, over the, over the, over the history, it started going more in the direction of how men were, you know, being viewed, you know, it was, it was the sum of the body parts instead of just the package as a whole, you know, and when they brought, um, when Jake Wood, you know, he um, started really championing women's, you know, bodybuilding and then bought the women, um, bought the Olympia, that was one of the things he was just like, you know, I want to bring women's bodybuilding back, but I want to bring it back to where it originated. Yeah. And so that's what it was, is just taking it back, taking it back to its roots. Like yeah. it, it kind of lost its way. So he, we're bringing it back home. Yeah. That's all it is. It got lost and we're just bringing it back home. And so the, um, the 2020 Olympia was a huge, the 2020 Rising Phoenix and 2020 Olympia, but more of the 2020 Olympia than anything was a huge indicator that they were holding true to that because everybody always says, you guys always say that, you know, the league always says it, but they never stay true. But now there's no reason. There's a division for everybody. There's no excuses. And I tell people, I'm just like, there for this to really prosper, it has to be this way. And people and the, the athletes, they have to embrace it. Because a lot of times you have athletes, competitors who've been doing a division for years and all of a sudden they've slightly outgrown it. And the judges are trying to tell them yep. and they, they feel like, oh, you're just targeting me. No, no. We understand that you, 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 you're at the top of your game, but either you take some years off, calm that muscle down or you transition over. Don't get on Instagram and make it seem like, you know, the judges are doing favoritism and it's politics and it's just like, yeah. you know, it's a suspect of sport, but let's, let's, let's keep it, let's keep it honest. Let's keep it true. So. Yeah. You know, I can agree with you more what a, a good women's bodybuilder looks like. It is completely, it, it is aesthetics. It's so, I mean, you think about, if you think about like Linda Murray or, you know, Linda Murray or Corey Everson or, um, you know, Kim um, Chusevsky, all of these yeah. people, it just, it's like, yeah, it was a, a giant X with the tiny little waist that just tucked everything in. And there was, you know, they had balance and they had symmetry and uh, yes. yeah, it's not just about being big or being striated, right. um, you know, and you see a lot of them even too, you know, with this, this imbalance from top to bottom too and that's what you know that's what some of the other divisions are for so right you know and it is i'm just like you know it's just it's one of those things that i feel like that it's 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 finding its way back to where it's supposed to be yeah. and you know it's just going to continue getting better i'm just like you know it's i'm ex i'm excited i'm excited to transition into the um to the division and I absolutely love it I do. I'm just like, it's one of those things that if you speak to, and I'm sure that you will over time, because I know you already spoke to Andrea, but I'm like, that was one of the things that most of us have in common is just like most of us, we were excited to transition because it, it was so hard to have to hold back. You yeah. know, it was so hard trying to, to keep the muscle caged under control, trying to make it fit someplace that it didn't belong. And so you know, it's, it's exciting to actually do this and also be able to be us, you know, to do the whole hair and makeup and all this stuff, like all the extra, you know, and so it's, it's, it's fun. And it's now is the time is just to, to show not only the fans, but those who don't really understand the sport, because people are always surprised when they see me, when they see my pictures, when they see me, and they're just like, so are you figure because you're, I was like, no, I was just like, and I always ask, I was like, why do you think I figure? Well, I've seen your pictures and you're just so glamorous in them. I was just like, no, I'm, I'm woman's bodybuilding. Yeah. But this is woman. And I tell people, I said, but this is woman's bodybuilding. I said, glam has nothing to do with the division. Yeah. I said, it's, it's the person. I said, and so all of us have our different levels of just glam and extra and all this stuff like this, but all of it is beautiful. Yeah. All of us want to be beautiful. And so that's what it is, is, us remembering that this is, like you said, it's a personification of us as women, you know, 
And it's, a, it's bringing a very beautiful and buff, you know, look to the stage. It's, it's my version of beautiful. Yeah. So, and I'm proud of it. Yeah, we love it. <laughs> we love it. And we're so, I'm just like, I'm so glad it's back. I honestly am. I know so many women's bodybuilders too, that were just like, you know, it, it was like, what, we don't have a place for us now. Like it's, we started this. Yeah. <laughs> no. And it was, it was heartbreaking when they first, when they left the Olympia and well, before they left the Olympia, it started to die off. Yeah. Um, and I'm um, circling back to that question. Why you, um, why, you know, what was the, the, I guess the reasoning it was, it started to die off in not only the amateur, but in just the pro level, less and less shows were offering it. And it was one of those things that if the fans weren't desiring it, then, and a lot of people, a lot of fans, and that's something that I had to learn myself, you know, because in women's physique, you know, there was a lot of division. There was a lot of shows that the, the division wasn't offered. Yeah. And so, you know, I have to ask promoters. I was just like, why? why? Why are you guys like leaving out these divisions? You know, it's not that there's not enough competitors. So what's the point? And they, they explained it was just like for the pro level. They were like, somebody has to sponsor the prize pot. And so you have sponsors. They're just like, I want to sponsor bikini. I want to sponsor, you know, and so, I'll, if, and if they want something more muscular, it was 212 or it was, you know, open bodybuilding. And they want to, and that's the whole thing is just like those, you know, show line sponsors and everything. They weren't interested in it, yeah. you know, because it's the whole thing is just like, they get to stand on stage with the winner and everything. And you're just like, no, I, I want to. I want to sponsor one of these divisions, you know, this is what I'm willing to, you know, sponsor. And so if you can't, if you can't find somebody, enough people, yeah. enough businesses to find enough appeal in it, to put their brand behind that sponsor, then it's not there. And if it's not there and at the Olympia level, it's the same thing, you know, and obviously the Olympia level is the upper echelon. So if you can't find enough people, yeah. and so that's what it became harder and harder, in my opinion. You know, I'm, I'm sure it had other components to deal with it, but that was kind of the logic behind what I was seeing that over time, it was just like, it became less and less appealing Yeah. that it was, it was, it was, dra it was, it was draining money instead of, you know, making money for these shows for the sport. And so it was, and it was also giving it a, um, it, it was giving mis mixed messages because since there was such a division, in my opinion, of how bodybuilding was, women's bodybuilding was interpreted and perceived um, in other countries compared to the US. Because, you know, over time they started doing um, NPC um, related and IFBB shows so that more and more um, people from other countries can get their pro cards. You didn't have to come to the States anymore. But yeah. the thing is that if you're having a show out there where you can get a pro card and this is their perception and standard over here, and it's a little different from here. So now you're having this lack of, and so trying to, all that coming together is just became, you know, more and more convoluted that it just took a little time to untangle it, to finally get it back to where it is. And it took an individual like Jake Wood to say, you know what? Yeah. One voice speaking to everything. Let's go out, let's continue promoting, let's continue making other people understand other countries. Let's start putting shows in other countries so we can show a cohesive, consistent, so everybody understands. And so that's what it took. And so I feel like that not only the sport, but the division is on the right path that it's gonna get back to the level of glory that it deserves. So, and I'm, I'm excited to be a part of it. I really am, so. Yeah, I understand you had to have that congruency throughout the mm -hmm. world, basically, mm -hmm. because you were getting competitors from all over. The thing that I don't understand is when we talk about this sport as bodybuilding, like you said, if you're somebody who likes to lift heavy, who likes to grow muscle and, and can mm -hmm. do that um, through work ethic, work ethic and genetics and everything else, there has to be so so maybe at a local level you're not going to get a lot of 
women's bodybuilders who are going to look like, because obviously it just takes time. It takes years and years yeah. to add these layers of muscle, but there right. might be a place at the pro level to, for them to push when, you know, you are too big for women's physique. So it's like, I, it's just not, like I said, it's not um, fair. <laughs> well, well, here's the thing is that there, 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 there is that component that pushes and, and tells you that you're too big. Yeah. But the thing is, is that when you're a pro, it's kind of expected for you to have the professionalism to, if all of a sudden you're no longer doing great in shows, now your conditioning, your development, your look is on point, but for some reason you're still not placing well. Yeah. What I always did, if the second that I didn't place well and I knew everything was on point or I pursued, perceived that everything was on point. I always ask the head judge, help yeah. me understand mm -hmm. what I need to do, what was missing that I'm no longer doing well. Yeah. And the reality is that more times than not, that athlete got that feedback. You're getting a little too big yeah. for this division. And that low placing at the pro level, in my opinion, is, a, is an act of grace to tell you, hey, yeah. We're not going to place you as high as we used to. Yeah. You being an athlete and understanding the sport, you should be able to figure out why, you know? Yeah. And you should make that decision. Either you're going to take a year off or take some of the season off to bring that under control, or you're going to go ahead and move to the next level. But a lot of times they don't want to do that because it's like what you said. You get so caught up in that division that you're just like, oh, well, let me look who won. Well, maybe I need to bring my legs up more, or maybe I've actually, <laughs> even though it, we're talking about muscle, but on a side note, I remember one season that the bikini competitors, it was so funny because one season, all the bikini competitors, all of a sudden they were blonde or honey blonde and everything. And then once she looked gorgeous, but she was, a, she was, a, she was just jet black hair and she wore like a teal, dark teal suit. Then all of a sudden, the rest of the season, all you saw was teal suits and dark hair. <laughs> it was just like, so nobody figured out that maybe she just won because she brought the best package. It had nothing to do with you trying to emulate. And I think, and I say all that to say that's what happens at the other, at the women's physique, the, you know, the women's figure, is they look and it's just like, well, maybe I need to bring in a better suit. Well, maybe my, my makeup wasn't on point. Or maybe I need to bring up my shoulders more or my legs more. Maybe you're just already too big for the division. <laughs> and I think that's what the judges told you and your coach, but you heard something, you chose to hear something different. Yeah. Because I ask plain, I always ask plain, you know, because a lot of times you have judges that are trying to be um, respectful because they don't want to force anybody. It's your choice. Because yeah. some people, no matter how big they get, they're never going to change the division because they love the division and they're okay with not placing well. And I tell people, if you're in it for the love of this division, yeah. then just do it. Enjoy it. But yeah. if you're really trying to continue performing well yeah. and you're not willing to do those two options, you know, but and that's what it is. Just like they'll try to tell you, you know what? You're kind of on the border. You're getting a little too, your muscle bellies are getting too full. And I'm always quick to say, am I getting too big for the division? Is that what you're trying to tell? <laughs> do, do you feel that I'm too too big for the division? Because I, I want to, if you, if when you saw me, you think that I, she must not realize she came on the wrong, this is the wrong division. I said, just tell me. And if you're, you're at a point, you, it, it would do you well to transition to another division. And I'm fine with that. But a lot of people are afraid to ask that question because they're afraid of the answer. Yeah. So, yeah. And I feel that makes the difference between a competitor and an athlete. Because an athlete, if your goal is to be the best, then you're just going to do what you need to do. As in, if you're saying that now my best is going to be in this division, then that's the division I'm transferring and I'm going to keep, I'm just going to keep going. Yeah. You know? So it's, it's whatever beautiful. works for you. Well, what a, what a great problem to have, because honestly, mm -hmm. that means that, you know, you don't have a particular part you got to bring up. You nailed your conditioning. You look right. good. The problem is that I outgrew the division. Now you move on. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's just funny because it's a, it's a compliment really, because otherwise, you know, you brought a package to stage that 
it was incomplete and that wasn't the problem, you know? So, yeah. And it's a great, it's a great place to be at. And that's exactly how they described it to me when I did um, the optimum and I placed 10. I was the only Olympian at that show and I placed 10 and I was like, hmm, <laughs> something. What year was what year was that? It was, 20, it was last year. It was just before. It was the week before I did New York and I won the New York Pro. So, so have you? I apologize. I don't know this. Have you competed yet as a women's bodybuilder, or is that to come? Actually, um, I did New York Pro in 2020. Okay. I won that show and I placed fourth at the Olympia in women's bodybuilding. Okay. In okay. Yeah, I did just a little. Okay, so so what's so what's next for you then? Are you well? I'm already pre I'm like because I placed fourth at the Olympia in women's bodybuilding, so I am already pre qualified to compete in 2021 in women's okay. bodybuilding. So um, it's just like every other year, it's to be more better and to continue just making improvements. But I submitted um, a request to be invited, so this year I'm going to be doing the Rising Phoenix. Um, which is the, um, the only invitational for women's bodybuilding right now because none of the Arnolds um, include women's bodybuilding. I'm going to pause for a second. I think something happened with your sound because it's... Oh, you can't you know, hear me? It's like, um, I don't know, it sounds different. I don't know, it says I'm not still... Can you... hear you but it sounds like it sounds like you're speaking into i don't know what it is hmm. i'm gonna let me, let me pause one second and just see if i can we go back let me see if i can speak again does it sound better no, no. It's... <laughs> i saw it on your face i was like no no <laughs> i don't know what happened do you want um, can I leave it and come back in? Is that possible? Why don't you try? I'll pause and you. Yep. Okay, so you were talking. About, all right, so you're qualified for the Olympia, so you don't have to compete until. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Right. So I'm like, technically, um, I don't have to, since I'm already qualified, I don't have to requalify. So, um, which is the first year that I've ever been in this situation. So it's kind of weird um, that I don't have to do anything until the Olympia. So I get a longer development season, which I'm happy about because it's allowing me to really take time to really fine tune my body. Because last year I only had 10 weeks. And so it was like a rush job. I was always just uh, miserable. You know, nobody ever talked to me when I walked into the gym because it was like, look, I've got, I've got nine weeks. Leave me alone. You know, I've got a lot of work to do. But um, right. one of the biggest um, next to the Olympia um, is the Rising Phoenix. And yeah. the Rising Phoenix was created once women's bodybuilding was removed from the Olympia. It was their replacement for, you know, um, the Olympia. But now it's an invite since everybody, the women's bodybuilding is back in the Olympia. So I requested to be invited to be able to compete in that show. And so I, I got an invitation. So I'm excited. So that's just um, about five, five and a half weeks before the Olympia. So I'm, I'm going to do that show. Okay. So doing the Rising Phoenix, then going into the Olympia. And then I am, I've decided that I'm going to go overseas and compete after the Olympia, mainly because I've all, well, I've always come, promised myself that I would travel when I, as I competed, but yeah. to also bring that unification of the, you know, the look and, and what the league is looking for, you know, to other, you know, other locations. So I'm going to be doing the Romania um, Pro Muscle Fest. So I'm excited doing that in November. So it's going to be, it's going to be a great long season, but a great season, <laughs> but I'm excited. I'm excited too. That's awesome. So well, I want to touch on a couple of things um, before I let you go. I, first of all, just all the explanation with everything with women's body, bodybuilding. I think that um, the more information that people have about this, it's, it's just the better. So I yes. really appreciate that. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about your training. What does your training look like and how has that evolved over the past 
um, you know, I mean, since you first stepped on stage? Well, I'm just like, one of the things that I won't say ball, but I, in the beginning, when I first came into the sport, every, everybody used to always tell me, um, and it's usually men, not to say anything about that, but just saying that it was like, oh, well, you have to train like a bodybuilder. And I'm just like, okay, but you need to develop the muscle and we need to get conditioned. Yeah. And there are other sports that need that also. So, yeah. you know, why can't I just train the way that I train? You know, I've, I've been in sports all my life. Track and field is where I, I first started weightlifting. So, but um, when I first started with women's physique, I mean, women's figure, I'm just totally just ignoring the fact that I was a women's figure. <laughs> women's physique, anyway. But I actually started with just, you know, that whole just focusing on um, what the requirements were. Okay. And so, you know, I reviewed all the guidelines and everything, and I knew the body parts that were supposed to be showcased and stand out. You know, even though you have a whole entire package, um, there were certain areas that, that were supposed to be highlighted, like, you know, shoulder caps, you know, a nice, you know, broad um, lat into a tapered um, waistline, a beautiful quad sweep, you know. And so those are the things that I focused on. And so based on what needed to be developed, I'm more of a strategic um, um, lifter, um, that I spend the areas of my body that are um, need to be highlighted in a division. That's what I focused on. So women's physique, I uh, would put in, I used to train my shoulders um, four times a week. Um, and yes, <laughs> well, you know, there was just like a shoulder cap, you know, I'm like, even though I had broad shoulders, I didn't have a cap. Yeah. Um, and the thing is that a lot of people, and I always tell people because I'm also a posing coach, is that I said, even though they say a shoulder cap, they mean a complete cap. So a lot of people would always focus on the medial but they would never do anything with the rear delts or their front delts. And so that's why it's four times. It was just like trying to really bring it up that the entire shoulder yeah. when you're lean looks like a true, like it's a cap on there. And so just focusing on it the way that it needs to be that I'm actually developing all the heads so all the components of a specific body part, you know, because in the back there's more than just one muscle, you know, so you focusing on those details because the devil is in the details. Um, as I moved to women's physique, it pretty much was just a conditioning of the entire body, but you still had, you were a more developed figure competitor. And yeah. so that's how, I, that's how I looked at it. I needed to have the shoulder caps and the, 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 the lats, but I needed to have more detail in the back. I needed to have more detail, you know, in my quads. You need to see more separation. And so I spent more time lifting a little heavier but going into higher reps. So in figure, I wasn't lifting as heavy, but I was doing a lot of high reps, a lot of conditioning kind of training, which is what we did in track and field. Okay. So you move into heavier weights with women's figure, I mean, women's physique, but you still need to keep it under control so you don't get the muscle bellies too dense. And so as I transitioned through the division, I increased with the level of, um, of weight. Okay. Um, and I did it for longer periods of time. So in the earlier um, divisions, I did lift heavy so that people don't misunderstand that you still have to lift heavy, but your development season, which is what I call my, cause there's no real off season when you compete. So my development season was much shorter. So when I was in figure, I would spend like, I would go through a eight week development season where I was lifting really heavy. You know, I was focusing on trying to move as much weight to get that strength. And then I would transition more into the conditioning, which is muscle conditioning and endurance where I was lifting with moderate weights or lower weights, but higher reps. And as I moved into the other divisions, when I moved to women's physique, instead of just that eight weeks, it was 12 or 16 weeks of lifting really heavy and then transitioning that, you know, you're moving into the moderate or lower weight. And so now in women's bodybuilding is that, I, my development season is, I have, I am actually into, um, I want to say, because I got off stage in December, I took a year, I took a, a year, a month off because I had to have hernia surgery. So I started my development season at the beginning of March, pretty much. And so I'm looking at, you know, almost like 20 weeks of being able to lift really heavy, you know, and then 
Um, but coming into like around the 16th week, just transitioning into moderate levels of like um, weight, not extremely heavy, moderate level of weight and starting to increase the rep levels and everything to start bringing in the conditioning and the fat loss and everything. But that's how it transitioned. I don't think that the workouts, when you're in the divisions that re do require um, true muscle, um, that's not to take away from any other, from bikini. Okay, it does take away from bikini, but we're not talking about that. Um, but, <laughs> but, you know, the ones where you have the, the true like muscle um, shape, not just the toneness, you know, and tightness. Um, yeah. I don't think the actual training really needs to change. Um, if you have a, a body part that's lagging, yeah. then you obviously need to spend more time. And, you know, I tell people that I'm like this whole idea. Well, I, I train really hard on, you know, one day to bring up my, my legs. I'm just like, you probably need to train hard two or three times a week, not just one day a week. And so that's the whole thing. You assess the body. I assess my body and what area needs to come up to balance my frame, to balance my symmetry. Then I put more time and energy you know, more days, more workouts into that, you know, that body part, but it's always the same. It's always the same mindset. You know, I go into a development phase where I'm lifting really heavy to really put on more density and to really, you know, get the deep muscle belly and definition. And then I start sculpting, which is what I think of it. I start sculpting just like, you know, a sculptor and chiseling away to see yeah. the masterpiece that I've been spending all that time creating. So, yeah. That's really great. So are you, when you get more into your prep time, are you, what do you end up with like as far as cardio goes? Oh, well, actually cardio for me um, is, I've always had to do a lot of cardio. Okay. And that's just something I've always had to accept. Um, I tend to carry, which is so hilarious because as, as small as I can get my waistline to be on stage, um, when I do put on the extra fluff so that I can reshape my muscles, I tend to hold fat and water from my core to my knee. So that's where I hold my, um, my fat and my water. Okay. So um, when it comes to actually doing the cardio, for me to get that water and that fat off my legs and my glutes, I have to put in more time. I'm like, it is what it is. Even though I do um, in women's bodybuilding now, I do train you know, much harder than I was able to in the other divisions. It still hasn't changed the fact that for me to really get lean, I have to put in the, the extra cardio. So for me, um, last year, I was doing pretty much about, I want to say almost two hours of cardio a day. And, so, and what's funny is that that was easy because in the other divisions, I was doing easily three hours of cardio a day. So... Oh. Yes. I'm just like, I'm like, because it was one of those things that I couldn't do like a lot of like sprints and everything because being a power sprinter, that would really increase the size of my, my legs. But you have to do something to get the fat off without burning off the muscles. So it's always that steady state, which means if you're doing that steady state, you got to go a little longer, you know? And so I would do a little hit work but then most of it was steady state, you know, fasted cardio, midday time, and then right after a workout or something like that. But women's bodybuilding, once I transitioned over, I didn't have to do as much cardio, you know, but then I still had to, you know, it doesn't change. I'm not one of those, I'm not one of those unicorns out there in the bodybuilding world that you see and they're just like, yes, I, I'm eating 5,000 carbs and I don't do any cardio and I've lost three pounds. I'm like, just die. As I'm on, <laughs> as I'm on the stair mill or the spin bike, I'm like watching that on Instagram. Oh, just die, you know, swipe. <laughs> it's just like, whatever, you know, but, you know, all of us have our, all of us have our cross down there. So that's mine, you know, but being a track and field person, I don't have a problem doing it. So I'm, I'm blessed that, you know, I had that track background that doing, you know, running or jogging or something like that. I don't have a problem with it. So it is what it is. I do what I need to do to bring the best package to the state. So yeah. Wonderful. That's that's so oh <laughs> so much re respect for you now. I'm like, that's half of your day if you're doing <laughs> cardio and then you're training as well. And I'm like, it is you wake up and it's just like tired of people like, what are you doing? Look, 
in, I'm, I'm in one or two places. I'm either at the gym or at home. Okay, I'm just like gym or I'm at home. It's, it's either or. You know, if I'm not at gym at home, that's because I'm driving from one to the other. I'm just, it's like, give me ten minutes, you'll find me. I'm just like, but it is. It takes so much, you know. But you know, it's it's the nature of the beast. You have to do what you have to do. So. <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful. Well, is there anything else that you want to share? Um, I always want to give you the platform and the opportunity. Is there anything that you want to say to women, especially who are watching or listening? Um, advice, maybe just even generic health and fitness or about competing or whatever you would like to say. Well, I like to, one of the things that I always, um, I always try to, um, promote or um, instill into people when they look at me, it's just like, when it comes to health and fitness or just bodybuilding or anything of that nature, you're just trying to be improved when it comes to fitness and um, wellness. It's, it's great to look at Instagram and have people motivate you. But at the end of the day, all you can do is be the best and the most beautiful you you can be. You know, I, when people contact me, they say, oh, I just want to look just like you. And it's just like, sunshine, you can't look like me. You know, I'm an original masterpiece that God created. But you can be the most brilliant and beautiful you you can be. You know, and for you to understand that, that means that you're probably not going to look exactly like me. You know, I have people, oh, if I could just, I just want your waistline want the best waistline that you can bring to your body yeah. and staying healthy because that's what it boils down to. I see people out there doing things and it's just not healthy for them. And it's just like, be the best you you can be and love that woman yeah. along the journey. Yeah. You know, from the beginning to the end, your body beautiful all the way to the end and just love thyself all the way and the journey is going to be fabulous. There's so many people who they're trying to get there. When I get there, I'm going to celebrate. Sweetheart, celebrate now. Celebrate right now. If you woke up and you lost half a pound, honey, celebrate. Don't celebrate with food. <laughs> but to celebrate, take a picture, post it online. There's enough of us in this community that are going to celebrate you because we get the journey. And I tell people, you got to respect your journey and other people's journey. Don't hate on yourself because your journey is a little harder. All of us are different. You know, I do make fun of women who, I have a friend, her name is Jill. She does never, she never had to do cardio a day in her life. The second she had to lean out, all they had to do is just drop 50 grams of carbs and all of a sudden she's like drop. And I'm just like, but you know, I celebrated her. I'm just like, you still look phenomenal. I'm striving to get to my level of you, you know, where she would reach. But that's what is, you know, I'm like, you can be as beautiful as you want to be when it comes to health and wellness and getting in shape. And if you want to compete, just compete. You know, people are always just like, I want to do what you're doing. Well, wherever you're at, if all you're focusing on is that you want to compete, then start in whatever division your body fits, because that's what makes it fun. So many people are miserable in this sport is because they want to be at a certain in a certain division, but their body's not ready for it, either muscle-wise or conditioning-wise. Yeah. Don't step on stage to the condition that says that you're ready and accept where your body is at at this state yeah. and just transition. But if you're just adamant, because I, I could never do women's bikini. I'm just like, if I was ever not as if I came into the sport and I wasn't as muscular as I was, I could never do women's bikini, yeah. but I wouldn't step on stage until my body was ready to do whatever division I was willing to do. And that's what a lot of competitors, that's the last piece of advice that I would want to give is not only you loving whatever your body can create the best you, you can be, but if you really want to enjoy this sport in a longevity type of way, don't rush the stage, enjoy the journey. This journey is, it is hard, but it's so worth it once you reach the end. But when you reach the end, if you can't celebrate it when you're on stage and you're miserable because you feel like you got cheated because you didn't get what you assumed, be honest with yourself. We're never, most of us are not honest with ourselves when it comes to being on stage. Yeah. Enjoy the journey, 
Start where your body tells you you need to start and let your body choose where it needs to be. And just have fun, respect the journey. Do you think that it's the day and age that we live in that people want this instant gratification? Because I see, I mean, you're somebody, do, do you, did you start off that way? Or you just sort of like put your toe in the water and said, I'm going to try this. And, and this is where the journey, like, did you, were you able to enjoy it the whole way? Take your own advice. I was able to enjoy it. I did go through time periods where I didn't, but I can honestly say that when I started in, um, in, uh, in the NPC, in, in, uh, um, the, the few shows, because I wasn't amateur long enough. And that is one of the things, even though I enjoy the fact that, you know, because people are like, oh, I want to be like that. I, I feel like I missed out on so much because I turned pro so quickly. Mm-hmm. And I had to, and the reason I, that was the time period that I was miserable because everything that you learn on the amateur level, I had to learn on the pro stage. Yeah. And so on that level, they expect you to understand. They expect, you know, because you're a pro. So they're expecting you to have a certain amount of knowledge and awareness. But I didn't have that. And so I learned it harshly because it was on a pro stage. <laughs> but the thing is that I did enjoy my journey. And the only time that I didn't is when I started allowing people to tell me what I was supposed to do. Yeah. And that's the biggest mistake that most people make is that they hire a coach and the coach is, well, you need to do this, you know, you, and you're supposed to do that and you need to be in this. And it's just like, it's one thing when somebody, you hire somebody who's giving you guidance. It's yeah. another thing when you hire somebody who's decided to tell you who you're supposed to be. Yeah. And so I tell, I'm just like, be who you want to be. If this is where you want to be, then be there. And if your coach is telling you, no, I'm not going to try and find a new coach. You know, I'm like, and that's not to, to, to throw shade on anybody, but I see so many competitors, they're miserable yeah. because they're not doing what they wanted to do. Yeah. And that's all about, I, I'm doing what I want to do and I'm doing it the way that I want to do it. And the way that I want to do it, I tell people, I'm like, as long as it's in compliance with the sport, yeah. I never disrespect the rules, the regulations and the guidelines. But I always am unapologetically me yeah. when I'm on stage, when I'm off stage. And that's why I enjoy it so much. People, you can't do that. Yes, I can. There's nothing in the rules that says I can't do this. Right. Where well, you're not supposed to because we never, I'm not you. Right. And I'm not supposed to be you. Right. And what makes it look fabulous, the people that people are captivated with on stage are the ones who are being themselves a hundred percent and just enjoying the journey. And that's what it is. Not trying to pretend to be somebody else, not trying to, you know, become somebody else and not hating who they are because it doesn't look like somebody else. They're just embracing themselves a hundred percent and showing that love and confidence that they have within themselves to the world. And that's what looks captivating and beautiful on stage. And so wherever that takes a person, that's what they need to follow. And that's what I always mean when I tell people, you need to respect your journey. It's not like anybody else's, but you have to respect it because if you don't respect it in the long run, it's not going to respect you. Yeah. I think that happens through um, time and experience. You know what I mean? It's really Mm -hmm. hard for, you know, as someone who's 20 years old, I think to always understand, like, you have to have all these experiences for you to, it's a process, I think, to learn to love yourself. through that process yeah but I I feel like it's what you said I'm like it's also it's harder because of this day and age because with Instagram you know when we didn't have this Instagram and everything else and or we had it but it wasn't as forefront I should say because it's it's been around forever but (laughs) I'm like when it wasn't such a forefront it was easier because you had good people in your life who gave you insight, you know, that will help you mentor you. But now, you know, everything is about how many likes you got. If you posted the picture and the comments that people make, and you know, some people are out there and their whole purpose in life is to troll the Instagram or social media and to do people, do harm to people. You know, their whole, their whole day is about how many people can I be hateful to or make them feel miserable. 
And yeah. so, so many people absorb all of that. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's such a horrible thing that they lose their way and it's so hard for them to love themselves because they're too concerned about what these people who don't know them, what their opinions are, you know? And it's, 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 it's heartbreaking. Yeah. It's hard. And it's one of the reasons that I tell people, I said, now that I'm in women's bodybuilding and, you know, we, I engage or people engage me or they're coming across me on Instagram more and more or social media. I do have to take a break sometimes because I do find, um, even though I try not to, uh, at some point, it's like a virus. It does start to affect you. And so I have to take a step back from the social media so I can rebalance myself. Absolutely. You know, because I, you can tell people who had good hearts and good spirits and all of a sudden the, the, the negative energy and the poison that some hateful people have poured out into the social media, it starts to, it starts to mess with them and they start to become a little cynical or they start to become a little defensive and they start seeing darkness, you know, instead of focusing on the light in the world. And so, you know, I'm praying that, you know, we, we start shoring up our bodies and getting, you know, the shields of just, you know, to protect ourselves from all this ugliness so that we can just bring in a better, a more beautiful kind of environment for all of us to prosper in so that we can start raising each other up and enjoying this world for what it is, so. Well, I think, you know, one of the questions I usually ask is, you know, something like, what do you love and what do you hate about social media? And to what you were saying, I think that's a huge part of it because In order to make an impact, you have to put yourself out there, right? But you put yourself out there and now you're going to get, I almost feel like it's a, like it's the devil. Like it's, it's people as who are attacking you. And the thing that bothers me the most about it is I, I don't like to be aware of how many people are hurting and that's what it is. These people that are so evil are hurting and they're hurting inside and they want somebody to hurt with them to make them feel not feel alone i tell people i'm just like people who do this is that they're at a dark place and they're alone and they want somebody there with them yeah you know which makes it even that more heartbreaking because there's a part of me that even though it hurts me when somebody attacks me but i feel for them because i can see i tell people like i can see you you know, and it's just like, and it's heartbreaking that you can't see yourself, you know, because there's another way for you to, to reach out yeah. and not be alone. And so it's, you know, but there's this one of the things that why I, I am atrociously horrible with my social media. I get it all the time. I have yet, I, it's so rare that I speak on social media. You know, I get that all the time. Why don't you speak more? I'm just like, because I'm like, number one, I feel awkward on social media. Number two, I don't want to add another component for somebody to start attacking me, you know? You know, and so the whole video and everything else, you know, you need to do that more. I was like, I know I need to. I was like, but there's a part of me that's just like, kind of don't want to, <laughs> but like, it is. So people like they criticize like how you know any any type of way you know oh you present yourself in the best light or this or that or whatever and it's like well it's because when you get a, a substantial social media following people pick out the stupidest things to <laughs> criticize you about and you're just like you do everything you can to try to make you know what you're the information you're putting out there the like no right. flaws in here and it's like you know Really, you had to point out the fact that, you know, like you saw, like my dirty laundry was in the background or what, you know, it's just like, that's not the point of the, so it's like some days you just feel like you can't win. And right. It's just like, why am I, why am I even bothering? (laughs) You know, it's just like, you put a beautiful message out there and all of a sudden it's like, um, you forgot a period at the end. Really? Really? So, or with my my wonderful autocorrect decides that that's not what you really wanted to say. Here, let me finish that sentence for you while you're pressing the post. I'm going to, I'm going to correct this really quick before we sit it up. And all of a sudden it's just like, well, that's not what you're really doing in the video. Really? Really? So I, there was one little typo and that's what you focused on. Yeah. Not the message <laughs> of you being the best you and don't worry about if you're, you know, <laughs> just like, but I tell myself it's just, you know what? I get it. You know, Thank you very much for pointing out that typo. I appreciate it. 
So I, I don't want to give out any misinformation. So let me go ahead and correct that. Thank you so much. You know, and it's just like, or it's like what you said. Well, um, it looks like your 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 eyelash, your eyelash looks like it's coming off on the one. I'm just like, really? So I'm like, number one, my eyes are not very big. Number two, just I, it's not the eyelash. My eyeshadow was a little crooked, but okay. Thank you very much. Cause now I'm like, should I just take down the video and redo it or just deal with it? Right. <laughs> but, like you just lost on everyone or just this person because. Right. <laughs> so it's just, you know, I'm like, I'm sorry that I don't have somebody following me around doing, you know, my videos and everything and making sure we need to do another take because you were a little off. The lighting wasn't hitting you right. You weren't glowing. Let's, let's do take two. It's just like, look, I'm trying to put it up there. Yeah. Get on with my day and finish my prep and be the yeah. best that I can be. I'm so sorry that I ruined your whole time period because I forgot that extra comma. I'm I'm, I'm sorry. You know, I posted at 11 o'clock at night after my leg day. Forgive me that my autocorrect was off and I did sloppy with my spell check. So. <laughs> right, is always something. There's a there's a quote that I know John Meadows had put it up several times. It's a quote by Aristotle, and it says, "The only way to avoid criticism is to do nothing, say nothing, <laughs> see nothing." And I think that always comes to mind because the people at Tool, it's like. A lot of times they don't even have a profile picture, let alone the account is private, no followers, you know, they're probably oh, not even following they're you. They're not even following you. So you're thinking, are you literally just trolling through there to find something? You're not even following me. How did you find me? Yeah. <laughs> but hey, you're right. I'm just like, yeah. you know, but I'm at the point that I'm like, which is horrible for us. I'm just like me and a lot of my um, sisters are still, we're at a point that, if we do something, there's somebody that's on us. But when we go through a time period where we're not doing something, then all of a sudden somebody's saying, well, why are you not up here doing I'm thinking, really? You do realize there's a life outside of social media that I, I need to get to. So yeah. the whole thing that had you follow me, I, I need to still do that. <laughs> still need to prep. So I got to do that off of social media. Mm -hmm. I know you don't think I'm training me because I don't post all my exercises. <laughs> I'm really I'm working back here. But people don't realize too what a like it's a pain in the butt to film your workouts yes it truly is and yeah it's like I, I'll do it if the gym is empty or if I have an extra probably half hour because you know you're setting up and then it's like you know the cameras and the you know it's my phone it's like it's in the way of people right and else and you're you gotta get at the right angle there's nothing worse than yeah, it's like, okay, let me go ahead and do a video and you set it up and all of a sudden you look at it and it's not at the right angle. Worse yet, oh, it's a great angle, but you can't see what I'm lifting. <laughs> oh, oh, oh man, my face is not in it. Okay, oh, the lighting is wrong. And I'm sitting like, I'm doing two extra sets to do a video. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> you know, cause you can't do it. Cause now I'm at a place that I can't do a light set just to show the move. Cause then all of a sudden somebody's asking, but well, that doesn't look like you're you're lifting a lot. And then it's always like, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I'm just saying, yeah, you are being disrespectful because I'm trying to show you my day, you know, my workout. But now right. you're at, you're complaining about the fact that you don't think I'm lifting heavy enough. Never right. mind, this is my seventh set trying to get to the video. <laughs> no, you're right. Yeah, you're like you did five work sets of something, and you're like when you would normally do two because you're trying to get a take. I'm just like right, you know, sort of like. <laughs> But anyway, but you know, it, it's like you said, it's the it's the nature of the beast. You know, either I can do nothing and be nothing and have peace, yeah. or you know, I can I can deal with the one or two or yeah. three hundred bad people to motivate. You know, but if I can motivate, you know, I can inspire. I can get somebody at least one or two people who wanted to give up because they were frustrated, yeah. and they see that post. And even though they saw the typo, or maybe it wasn't the right lighting or something like that, but it 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 motivates them enough to yeah. want to keep going, to yeah. not give up on themselves. That's what makes it worth it. You know, it's just like when I get that one, it's just like I needed to, I needed to hear that today. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep going, you know. And then it's because for me, that's what it, that that's what it really is about for me from the social media standpoint. Yeah. If somebody can understand that. No, it, it isn't easy for us. You know, some people make it look so easy. 
You know, they don't talk about the good or, you know, they don't talk about the bad. They only show the great. They only show their bodies when they have the pump. They only show, and I tell people like, no, well, you don't look that big. That's because I'm not showing you my after workout pump. This is me every day. This is me during off season. This is me messing up the take because <laughs> I'm horrible. Do you know, I'm just like, this is me because the fact that I'm on the video and I'm too animated and my hands are always in the way, but this is me. And if you're even closely remote to being as imperfect as I am, this is me saying it's okay. Yeah. It's okay because you're not the only one out there. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Well, and I, I think that's the beautiful thing about social media because it really, it does bring us together. If mm -hmm. we, can, you know, if you can kind of trudge through all the crap that comes along with it, you know, yes. it is. Yes. So, and you, here you are, like I said, from the beginning, um, you know, the poster woman for, um, oh, that's sweet. <laughs> well, slow and steady wins the race, right? This is bodybuilding. This is what mm -hmm. it's all about. So yeah, uh, I'm just like, I'm super, super grateful for your time today. We talked a long, <laughs> we talked a long time, but that's, that's awesome. It's, it's great. So, and uh, I'm like, be cheering it was a long time for me. I'm just like, I enjoy, I enjoy people who have a passion for the sport yeah. and who are trying to get, like you said, to get that information out there, because the more that people understand it, the more they can see how beautiful it is. So yeah. You know, I always block off extra time just in case I have a good interviewer that is very engaging and you are quite engaging. So I, I've, I've enjoyed this journey with you. So. Thank you so much. Well, and I, I do want to say that this is the goal of the podcast because there are so many women who have been, especially been doing this over the last 10 years that I've been following and, um, you know, just to hear your perspective on everything people need to see the female behind the athlete and that's the goal of these interviews so um yeah for, for shining it was awesome <laughs> thank, you so much. thank you for having me on the show too yeah so um Mela, where can people find you if they want to connect with you your instagram first of all and um you know a website or anything Actually, I am. I am working on that. <laughs> so, all you fans out there, I'm working on it. Don't DM me about it. I am. I'm working. I'm trying really hard. I'm going. I'm, the goal is to get it up before the end of this month. I, even, I know I said that last month, but I'm serious this month. So, the website is going to be coming up. It will. Um, the the name is going to be maylashpro.com, and it will have, um, you know, my random rants of blogging of just things that, you know, I think that people need to know, ways to purchase pictures and stuff like that. Um, um, you can purchase like um, workouts, you know, series and all that stuff like that. But when it comes to my social media, I'm kind of a classic kind of woman. So it's Mela Ash. Whatever social media you're looking for, you type in Mela Ash. <laughs> and that's me right there, you know, so. I'm like, I'm on, I'm most actively on IG, um, but um, IG forwarding through Facebook, I will re-energize my Twitter um, once I finish focusing on my um, website, but yeah, Twitter and I am, after a lot of feedback, I am looking at getting on TikTok, which is going to be just an act of God, so to speak. Um, but that's I'm trying to help myself get out of my shell of being more engaging. So, but yes, so it's everything is just Mela Ash for right. any of the social media if you want to follow me and do you follow do, my journey. Um, you do posing, you do online coaching as well. Um, I do online coaching um, when it comes to wellness. Um, I, it's very, I, I, I do predominantly um, online coaching for wellness and fitness for everyday people who want to change their lives and improve their fitness. So, so life coaching, so to speak. I do also online for prep, but because I am an active competitor, I only take one or two clients um, a year. So I've already reached my capacity um, for this year, but um, I do, I'm also a posing coach. 
I do that in person and online also. So that's something that I do all year round. But yes, so um, if you want to know more information about that, um, you can go to my social media, my Instagram account and email me or just email me directly at MaylaAshPro at gmail.com. Um, and I can um, answer your questions about um, the options of when it comes to um, either health and wellness, um, online coaching, or when it comes to posing, so. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, this is Deborah Jean, and you can follow me on Instagram at buffcake22. You can follow the podcast at Women's Maximum Fitness Podcast, and you can find us on YouTube at buffcake22 as well. So um, for me and Mela, <laughs> we just want to say have a great day and remember that healthy looks different on everybody. Perfect. Peace.